first question, guys, came from Jojo on Instagram. Okay, and Jojo asked the question, and I remember mentioning this in the video, I totally do. Dennis, you mentioned something interesting, she says. The childlike versus childish sides of us in your last video. Can you expand on this, please? So JoJo's asking about what I mentioned earlier, guys. In a video, in a video I think it's my latest video, um, related to either being childish and allowing the childish side to run our lives, or being childlike, right? And uh, a lot of people are going, wow, like the, I'd never really recognized the difference between these two, uh, two ways of being, right? So let's dive into this just for a brief moment. Childish, and, and, and please don't take any offense to anything that I'm saying. We're beyond that. We're far beyond that. We're looking deeper than going, oh, that's me and, and you know, all that and being instinctual. Childish is to blame people and situations for your current state. And it's the inability to take total and full responsibility for where you are. So that would be an example of allowing the childish side. I love her too. Yeah, she's fantastic. I love her too. Uh, yoga with Adrian. Um, yeah, I do her, her yoga videos from time to time too, right? And uh, so, when we think about childish, I want you to look within you, right? And recognize whether there is still blame for your current state or whether you've taken full responsibility. Looking at the childish side as well, it's to live by the same belief systems about yourself and life as when you were a child. Therefore, we are living by the interpretations of others and never our own. What does this mean? This means that if we're allowing the childish side to run our lives, then we're basically a mold of a group of other people that have consciously and unconsciously programmed us from childhood onwards. It's very important to recognize this and to go, man, like, yeah, this childish side really is running my life. And finally, it's to fear more than to love. Love shows mental maturity and fear shows an unwillingness to let go of something. Hmm, hmm interesting. So love shows mental maturity, whereas fear shows an unwillingness to let go of something. You may want to write that down and investigate that a little bit more because the question is, is what are you not willing to let go of either more recent or more in the past. So that brings us in terms of childish versus childlike to a better understanding. Heba says my child side ran my life for so long, but no more. I don't blame others. I have a tendency to blame the way I feel, my health. I used to be in that boat as well. Absolutely. A new chapter of life. I'm working on embracing the journey. Julie is right there. And so what is it like to be childlike, guys? What is it like to be childlike? I mean, this is, this is really an exciting and a very a creative and peaceful place to be. So let's understand what it's like to be childlike and see if the childlike side is running the show. Childlike is to experience mental maturity and upgraded beliefs. Upgraded beliefs? So if you look at the beliefs of when you were younger, it seems like there's an upgrade there. There's been a certain amount of conscious awareness around your past beliefs about yourself, what you're capable of, your self-worth, these sorts of things, whether people are threats and competitors or whether you compete with them and love them unconditionally, these sorts of things. Mary's here. Hey, Mary. Good to see you. Good to see you. So you feel, you just feel, and you don't have to think about this too much, right? 
you just feel like you've upgraded your beliefs and there's there's a mental maturity there. And when there's a mental maturity, there's also an emotional maturity there. And that is the beginning of being childlike. Playfulness, playfulness. You find yourself going through the day and instead of, you know, telling the kids, hey kids, it's not the right time. I can't play cops and robbers with you. Okay, I don't wanna play Dungeons and Dragons right now. Right? Instead of that, you allow yourself and you give yourself the opportunity to be playful. Playful the way you were right? prior to things getting overly serious. So if you feel like this is starting to come into your life, then I commend you. I'm so, I'm so happy when someone comes to me and tells me, Dennis, I feel like I'm getting more playful in my life. That's a beautiful sign. Because playfulness activates further oxytocin. And the more oxytocin we can build within our systems, the more neuroplastic our brains can be. And the more we can, or the quicker we can change into who we're meant to be. Right? And then there's the intuitive side of us rather than the over-analytical side. Ask yourself, warrior. Am I starting to feel more intuitive and trusting that intuitive side of me? Or am I staying in a place of being over analytical still about everything? Spontaneousness rather than overthinking. And this is an interesting place to be when you're childlike. You start to not overly examine things anymore because overly examining things brings up deeper sensitivity more anxiety and possibly panic. And so we get to a place where we understand that we can trust the language or the voice of our hearts rather than rely on the voice of our minds. Because I believe that when we focus too much on looking to analyze something or overthink something, we get ourselves to a place where the answer is never answered, number one. And number two, it takes us away from the present moment. And your healing is determined by your ability to be engaged and involved in what's taking place around you in this present moment, right? Curiosity over staleness. Ask yourself, am I becoming more curious or am I still kind of stale? Am I living a stale life or do I have that sense of curiosity and wonder? I think somebody mentioned it that I once had when I was a playful child, right? So you find yourself being more curious. Whoa, what's, how, how in the world does the paint stay on the wall that way? And how does this happen? And how many planets are, and, and it's not like you're, you're fighting to find the answer, but there's a sense of curiosity there and there's a sense of being guided to the right information. And finally, there's trust. If you're living a childlike life, then you have a deeper level of trust in life, okay? You're no longer in a place where you feel like you need to do everything on your own and by yourself. You have trust in what you're doing. And no matter what you do, whatever action you take, you're not gripping on the outcome because that's what anxiety is. I'll do something as long as I know that it's gonna be okay in the end. So what happens is you're in a social setting with people and you have this urge to be expressive, but then you suppress what you wanna say because you feel like it's gonna hurt people's feelings or you feel like you're, you're going against someone, there may be some conflict there. And therefore, you don't say anything, so you suppress it. Instead, you say, you express what you need to express, and you trust in whatever outcome arises. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If anxiety is suppression, then freedom is expression. So when we can get to a place, you know, where we're, and you'll get this through the book, right, where we're reframing things, and we're expressing ourselves in the way we wish we would have expressed ourselves in the past. And we're responding in the moment rather than reacting. 
when we put reframing and responding together, we've got a powerhouse plan, right? And, uh, and that's in the book, my friend. So I hope that helps clear up the idea of being childish versus childlike. Did that help you? Comment below if it did. Hit the love button because I love you. I love each and every one of you. And th the whole teachings and the wisdom and the knowledge and everything like that comes from a place of, of unconditional love for you on this journey because I know it's going to take you to, to, to such clear places, right? Respond, don't react, Heba, that helped you. Freedom of expression, very timely, okay, good. I'm glad that spoke to you. And if it didn't, if it didn't, then just say, Dennis, you know, I have no clue what the heck you're talking about. And uh, could you expand on something? And I will lovingly go ahead and expand on whatever you need me to expand on. Um, to overcome PTSD, Rajdeep, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of content there on the YouTube channel. So all you got to do is uh, you could put up PTSD, the anxiety guy, or trauma, the anxiety guy, reframing the anxiety guy. Put those things in the YouTube search, and you're going to find a tremendous amount of um, knowledge there. Montana, I'm drinking green tea. We're keeping it simple today. It's so great that you're here. I love our combos, by the way. And uh, yeah, just simplifying today. There's no reishi this or turkey tail that or this or that. I'm not going too deep today. And I said, you know what? What do I feel like? I feel like that. Boom. That's what it is. Maria says, I'm doing an amazing job. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Let's uh, welcome Victor. Victor's joined the, the page. Great to have you here, my friend. First time. Um, and now let's get into a quick question here. We'll go live and then we'll go to the um, previous questions that have been asked. Uh, Nick, Dennis, any tips? Let me see if I can pin this. Sarah, actually, if you go on YouTube again, uh, there's a great video on that that I made um, about a year ago. Just uh, with the right keywords, you will find that. Um, Dennis, any tips in bringing belief to reframe thoughts and emotions. Well, Nick, the biggest thing we have to really understand, and this is crucial for everybody, is that we may, you know, reframe our past experiences and traumas. We may begin feeling like we've got a better relationship with the child side of us, meaning the subconscious side of us. Um, we may feel like we're responding and being rational in the moment and such, but it never truly turns into a belief. And the truth is that I believe that the subconscious needs two very important um, things in order to turn an idea into a belief. In order to turn an idea into a belief, there's got to be a, a, a real obvious... Uh, amount of consistency okay so this is you know this is very important and we've heard this before but it's important to mention that consistency needs to be applied in the same moments of experiencing that sensitivity so the consistency in how to respond two podcasts ago I did a podcast on the five ways to respond in the moment of anxiety or sensitivity so you want to check that out, okay? And so with that consistency, it says, oh, something's consistent here, which means that we can allow the old idea to begin subsiding and we can bring in the new idea as a belief in time. And then secondly, it's the amount of feeling that you have attached to the new idea. So if I've got some feeling attached to it and I'm going, yeah, you know, I never, I never saw it from this perspective or whatever it may be. And of course, speed slowing down plays a big part in convincing the subconscious that something is safe rather than threatening. But when we add feeling to the responding in the moment, that's what the subconscious wants to see in order to turn an idea into a belief. And to add feeling 
what you really want to do is you want to compound the new idea. You want to continue to build. For example, let's get an example here. So I've got an idea, a thought, and a thought may be I'm never going to overcome anxiety. Let's just take something very uh, consistent straight down the line. Um, I'm never going to overcome anxiety. That's an idea that a lot of people go around there, you know, live their lives with. And then there's a, a counter idea or a responsive idea, and it's mental, okay? And the idea is I'm doing the right things for myself right now, and therefore in time, my level of sensitivity and anxiety will lessen to the point where it disappears, okay? And when I mean disappears, of course, not completely, but um, the fight or flight is always going to be on at the right time. And then, so I've got that idea, right? I'm doing all the right things, and I've countered one idea with another. Now I want to build on it. What am I doing specifically? Well, I'm reading this book, and I'm gaining a tremendous insight. Okay, well, now I've, come, now I've built up that new idea a little bit more. Well, what else am I doing that can help me compound this idea? Well, I'm placing myself in new situations now. I'm proud of myself for allowing myself to be uncomfortable deliberately rather than just kind of run into it. So I'm placing myself in situations and experiences that in the past I never would. That's another. So you can see how I'm building on the idea because anxiety is nothing more than auto-hypnosis. You want to write this down in glowing golden letters. Anxiety is auto-hypnosis. And if we can begin hypnotizing ourselves the same way we've hypnotized ourselves into an anxious state, then we're going to begin feeling a sense of inner peace. The only question is, when you experience that inner peace, will it scare you to the point where you revert back to anxiousness? Or will you embrace this new feeling as the new you? Now that is the greatest challenge. I hope that helped a little bit there, Nick. Colby said something. I'm not sure what Colby said. Oh, the audiobook. You're enjoying it? That's fantastic. Yes, the audiobook is out now, my friends. Enjoy it. I I didn't um I didn't uh speak in that audiobook, but um I found someone who was quite good at it, so he was able to go through the nine hours because uh I don't know. I looked at it and I was like, nine hours. I've read my book, like a thousand times and uh, I'm gonna get someone else to do this and that's kind of what my, where my heart drew me so that's where it was so I hope you're enjoying the audiobook all right got this very nice mug in uh, Bali and I had the tea strainer and I lost it so I'm a little bit sad because of that but look at look at how beautiful that is it's so nice it's so nice Yeah, you're very welcome, Nick. I'm glad. I'm glad it, it uh, spoke to you a little bit there, and just to touch as well on this, guys, it's really important to understand that you don't have to understand everything right now, right? Many people get frustrated with themselves and they get really impatient on this journey because they don't, um, they don't fully understand something. They, someone may say something. Someone may express something or explain something or in a video or whatever, and you don't get it completely. Well, maybe you're not meant to get it in that moment. Maybe it's going to take some time. So be patient, which is what the last YouTube video was all about. Um, so back and forth, let's go to the next question. Cheryl, I don't know if Cheryl's here. Cheryl, are you here? If you are, it's great to have you here. And if not, why the heck are you not here? I'm just kidding. I'm joking. Total joke. Um, Cheryl asked uh, on the uh, anxiety group how to gain self-worth and confidence back while healing from an anxiety disorder um, and in a social situation. Well, let's pinpoint a couple things here. Self-worth is gained through the willingness to explore new ideas. Keyword, explore. 
And we have a sense of dread and fear when it comes to exploring new ideas. Because this system wants to work very efficiently within us. Whatever has been practiced the most, it basically turns your attention to things that will maintain those same ideas. It's kind of like a filter. You go through a whole filter system as you go about your day seeing, hearing, feeling, smelling, tasting things. And it goes through this filter system of consistency and familiarity and security and safety and what was there first in your childhood. I mean, there's a lot going on here, guys. And then you have this willingness to explore new ideas and you get this feeling of, ah, this is, this is nice, it's a nice idea, but it's not really me. Yeah, you don't consciously think it, but unconsciously it's there, right? And you think your way back into an anxious state, or you pick on things that will bring on an anxious state. So self-worth, if you feel a sense of unworthiness, it starts with the willingness to explore new ideas. Then acting on your creative voice within. Because I'm a big believer that the more creative we are, we've put a lot of things on the shelf because of anxiousness and anxiety, our anxiety disorder, right? It's kind of kept us away from being creative. We're all creative and divine beings, but we talk ourselves out of it, we act ourselves out of it, we speak ourselves out of it, and we forget that we are creative beings. So the truth is that you need to act on the creative voice within. Like, for example, I used to be supremely interested in playing the guitar. Like, I'm a big fan of, like, Jason Mraz and Jack Johnson and that sort of thing. And I was like, wow, wouldn't it be cool to just, you know, sing with my voice and, uh, and it, you know, and to create something, maybe new songs, whatever it may be. So self-worth is gained through acting on your creative voice within. And finally, having the awareness to not slide back into unworthiness. You give your anxiety and anything related to it an inch, it's going to take a mile. So if you begin entertaining these ideas that promote further sensitivity and fear, then don't be surprised that your body begins tag teaming with your mind and gets you into a state of anxiousness and therefore you begin picking on everything that can make you more anxious. So you want to go through the day to enhance your self-worth and confidence within. You want to go through your day with the mindset of calm awareness. I'm not hyper vigilant. I'm not hyper aroused aware, but I'm calm aware. It's like, it's kind of like you're on your front porch, you're sitting there, right? And you're not hyper vigilant in terms of who may arise at your front door, but you're simply and calmly aware of the people passing by your thoughts and ideas. And, and therefore, when you are aware and conscious of this, you can begin to recognize when you're falling back into that trap, right? Because it is really a trap. We shouldn't be going through our days feeling like we're on fight or flight all the time. We shouldn't be going through our day feeling like, you know, where is the next threat going to come from? Or is my anxiety going to arise? I mean, that's kind of living in survival mode and we don't want that, right? Uh, Jason Braz living in the moment. Yes, Jack Johnson is my jam, Samantha says. Absolutely. Soon I'm going to be singing to you guys. Aren't you excited? I'm going to be doing these Facebook Lives. Heck, I may even put it on the YouTube channel. You know, Dennis and his little guitar playing some Jason Mraz and such and coming up with new songs. Oh, my God. You know, how beautiful that's going to be. Dennis is getting creative. Uh, you just tapped into the brain big time. I would have never had the insight to understand what you just explained. Cheryl. Great. That's awesome. Um, so 
that touches on Cheryl's question. So it's just like watching the cars go by, but not focusing on who is them and what the number plate is, right? Absolutely, Craig. That's a great way to put it right there, right? Um, it's this awareness. And even let's say you're sitting on the porch and you see someone unfamiliar coming towards your door or someone familiar, it's, there's no difference there, right? There's no difference in how you react to it. But there is this sense of this person who's coming towards my door and my front porch serves me for the better, right? And helps me become who I want to become and therefore come on in, right? And then there's like this person who doesn't, you know, uh, doesn't feel like is in harmony with where I want to go in my life. And therefore I'm not going to be rude Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to gently and compassionately say, this isn't for you anymore, right? We don't live by those same ideas anymore. And here's how I'm going to prove it to you, right? You're reading the book, F Coping, Start Healing. Uh, you're doing the programs. You're going to understand how to respond in the moment. And many of you um, do understand that now. And now it's a sense of practice, right? Leslie Ukulele? My 10-year-old would absolutely love what you just said and would uh, would love to do like a duet with you probably. How cool would that be? So quick questions here. Um, let's go back and forth. It's, yeah, analogies are important, metaphors are important to get the message across. And uh, and they really helped me on this journey. I was like, every time, you know... So now, when you go through your day, guys, when you go through your day today and for the rest of the weekend, you're going to be sitting on your porch, right? Sitting on my porch and saying, well, you know, this supports me and this doesn't, and therefore I'll compassionately respond to this and I'll allow this to come into my mind and my body, my heart. And so, bring it with you. Uh, Swale, welcome. How to diffuse rage and anger. Um, well, you know what's really interesting with this is that we think that what we're raging about or angry about is the, the, is the cause or is the reason why we're feeling the way we are. So we think that what's happening in the present is the cause of our rage and anger when in fact it's compounded over time and there are things that we still haven't resolved and dealt with from the past. So what you want to do first and foremost is you want to start introducing the idea to your subconscious and to ask the question of, you know, what am I holding on to? What, where is my rage and anger coming from? Which experiences? Which um, heartbreaks from the past? Which feelings of injustice did I experience from the past? All these great questions. And you want to plant that seed prior to your meditation. And then you want to close your eyes and just simply allow the insights to show up during, after, or in time without forcing it, without looking for the answer so, so very much. We don't want to use a tremendous amount of willpower on this healing journey. We want to feel like it's very natural. And if it's feeling natural and these new habits are forming in your life and you're feeling like um, they're becoming light, a lifestyle rather than, you know, I'm going to do something for my anxiety, then I'm going to stop doing it and go back to what was familiar. No, no, no. That's not what it's about. Right? So Ashley has to go. Let's give it up for her. She's tremendous and in the group and YouTube and everything. This girl, this girl, I, I love her. And I'll see you soon, Ashley. Thanks for coming. Yeah. And okay, just one confusion. Is venting helpful or practicing forgiveness is more fruitful? When we consciously forgive, we're not really forgiving. Think about that for a second. If you're logically and rationally trying to forgive someone, you're not truly forgiving. Because we need to understand who runs the ship. 
okay? It's not the conscious mind that dictates what happens, okay? It's the subconscious that dictates our interpretations, our behaviors, who we believe we are. So there has to be, and I emphasize this in my book and my programs all the time, there has to be um, an effort in uh, getting your world to slow down mind, body, and allowing you to imagine and picture things that you want to happen. Because that's when people start crying. I've never seen someone, actually rarely, I've seen a couple people, but I've rarely seen someone logically try to forgive someone from the past or forgive themselves and start crying. It's rare. It's rare. I've rarely seen it. Like, I forgive myself. I tell myself those words. I forgive myself. Well, it's not really sticking, right? I don't have any feelings there. I don't have emotions. I don't have any resolve or release. But when I close my eyes and I picture the person, even I could, I could just be right across me, right? You see these exercises on YouTube under reframing. I'm picturing myself across myself and I want to forgive myself for things that I believe I did in the future or mistakes or whatever it is. And I'm speaking to myself in that imagery. And I'm expressing the words I need to express. And I'm hugging myself and letting myself know that it's fine. It's not as big as we're making it out to be. And now there's feelings and emotions arising because this brain doesn't really know the difference between a physical action and something that's imagined with feeling attached to it. So that's how you would diffuse the rage and the anger and Swale, again, um, I'm going to go back to go on YouTube and just go on the playlist that says visual imagery sessions. Visual imagery sessions. Guys, I want you to pick one video from there and do it every single day. If you want to do one in the morning and one at night, that's great as well. All right? And uh, whichever one speaks to you. Uh, you're welcome. Very welcome. Very welcome. Cheryl said something good to Monica. Sandy Butters is here. Hello. Good afternoon, Ancient. How are you? Uh, the best meditation, Rajdeep. Go on YouTube again and just put best meditation, the anxiety guy. I've got three there. Okay, three. Lots of tears lately. Edita, let it flow. You grab that resolve. You discharge that emotion and you move forward in your life. Good for you. Um, let's go into this real quick. Khan from YouTube. Is anybody interested in learning about exposure a little bit more? Exposure. So when we're talking about um, exposure, we're talking about either systematically or flooding your way in a situation that makes you uncomfortable until you feel different about it. Zoe's here. Oh my gosh, look at all the original warriors coming in. Hello, Daniel. Daniel Moore, a tremendous, uh, good to see you, brother. A tremendous inspiration. I love the podcast or the podcast we did together. It's on YouTube uh, under uh, recent uploads. Check it out, guys. Uh, we talked about alcohol and anxiety, and that was super fun. Uh, yeah. Okay, so some people are interested in the exposure insights. So let's go into it a little bit here. Don't know why my eyes are so wide, but okay. Um would be great to go over, Colby. Awesome. Let's do it, guys. Let's do it. Yes? Okay. So there are three phases to exposure. And you want to become aware of these three phases. Um, and again, in the first couple days of doing this, it's not going to feel like it's routine. 
it's going to feel like oh, this is new and I, okay, I do this here and I now I do this here and then here. It's going to feel like that. So don't be discouraged by it feeling a little bit mechanical in the beginning because in time it's going to feel very natural. But I want you to really uh, make this process natural in time. The three phases, phrases, uh, phases, phrases, phases. Number one is the preparation phase. Prior to exposing yourself, either in small doses or right there, right? You had a shark attack in the, the ocean and you're going to grab your surfboard and you're just going to go in there. You're going to go into flooding. Okay, that would be flooding. That would be exposing yourself directly. Systematically would be, okay, well, let me get comfortable with water first. I'm going to take a, a bath. I'm going to familiarize myself with water. Then I'm going to watch a video of somebody surfing and then yada, yada, yada. So it's more gradual. Notice the difference. So the preparation phase says, okay, I'm going to close my eyes. Okay, and this doesn't have to take long. I'm gonna close my eyes and I'm simply going to imagine with feeling connected to it, the best case scenario in this situation. Write this down. So you close your eyes and I gotta go, okay, let's take the surfing thing for example, or you get highly symptomatic or sensitive in a social setting. Okay, you close your eyes, I'm in the social setting. Do it right now. Close your eyes. You're in that setting that makes you feel anxious. And you're just approaching it and you're going to experience it fully just the way you want to experience it. So you're seeing yourself go through the experience calmly. You're enjoying yourself. You're expressing yourself. You're being open to other people's opinions and ideas. And you're playful and fun. And then you go through that entire experience until it's done. And you come home and you close the door behind you. And you go inside and you open up your eyes. And you know that you sent a direct signal to your subconscious of this is how I want this experience to go. Should I be in it in the future? Does that make sense? That's the preparation phase. Now, in the preparation phase, you bring one responding tool with you when you're exposing yourself. You bring one, not 10, one responding tool with you. Two podcasts ago, I gave you five different responding ways, ways to respond in the moment of anxiousness or sensitivity. I gave you five. If you haven't checked it out, guys, go on Apple, Stitcher, whatever podcast directory and check out that podcast, two podcasts ago uh, on responding. And so you grab one of those, okay? And you say, this is what I'm bringing with me throughout the day. Okay, throughout this experience, sorry. Then you go to the application phase. So now you're in the moment. Okay, you're feeling sensations. You're getting bodily reactions. You're feeling symptomatic. Okay, and the application phase is the recognition that you're beginning to apply that one skill set. So now you're applying it. You're going internal, but you're not going internal to recognize the threat behind the symptom. You're not doing that. Oh, I feel this, therefore it could be that. No, you're not allowing your instincts. Because remember, don't believe everything you feel. Don't believe everything you feel. Okay, we go beyond that here. So in the second phase of application, you apply your one skill set. You respond, for example, 
The skill set could be related physio physiology. It could be physiological. It could be your body. So you're simply focusing on the speed that you're speaking to people. That's a skill set. You're responding in terms of recognizing the perception that doesn't serve you and you're replacing it with a new idea. That's a skill set. Or another skill set is simply letting go and riding the wave. Uh, at the grocery store, there's nothing really that I need to do. I don't want to I don't want to use any skill sets. I'm just going to take my symptoms with me like I'm walking the dog. Come on. Come on. Right? I'm walking the dog. I'm taking my symptoms with me. If you want to be here in this moment, that's fine. And you know what makes this even stronger is to meditate while you're experiencing those sensations and the feelings anger this that rather than trying to get rid of something because the more you try to get rid of something the worse it gets we're not getting rid of anything here okay we're cooperating with parts of us that love us unconditionally and you're reading the book you'll understand what i just said so now you're applying that one skill set and the third phase of exposure would be recap so you recap Next time you're in the situation, what could have been different? And you recap the things that you're proud of that you did. Okay, so you recap those things. And I want you to do this today. Okay, preparation, application, and recap. Okay, so you do these three parts to exposure. Because you, if you don't do this... What tends to happen most of the time is that it feels like people are going into a, a den to fight a lion without a spear, right? You're going to fight that lion. It doesn't matter what other people think about the situation. To you, it's sensitizing, right? It's sensitive to you. I couldn't even leave my house, for example. The moment I started getting further and further away from my house, I started to get more and more symptomatic. I stopped breathing, for goodness sake. The closer I got to my house, strangely enough, right, my subconscious said, yep, this is where you're safe. Just stay here, okay? So I had no spear with me, no spear whatsoever, right? And so we need to apply these. Did that help? Comment below, let me know. Let me know if that helped. Let me know if that helped. And so now what we need to really focus on is to begin applying some of these, applying some of these ideas, right? And as we apply these ideas, what we need to understand is that in the beginning phases, we're going to feel really, really uncomfortable doing anything new. Right? We're going to feel really, really uncomfortable doing anything new. And that discomfort, my friends, is exactly the direction we have to go. Right? So just bring awareness with you as you're going through the day and understand that this journey can be very messy at times and this journey can be very gratifying at times and this journey can be very confusing at times and let me tell you something that's all part of the journey right i mean people that are here in this page and supporting us and supporting me you know they may just be starting the journey and are very confused and very sensitized and then there's people that have been here for months and they've gone to a much better place in their lives and they understand things better and they see life differently now. So please, wherever you are in this journey, you're exactly where you need to be. You're exactly where you need to be. Remember that, okay? There doesn't need to be more guilt arising. There doesn't need to be more blame arising or self-sabotage or punishment or suffering based on how you're feeling or how you're thinking. All you have to do is just accept where you are, okay? 
And as you accept it, we can begin moving forward, my friends. Um, let's just take one more question. So that helped. Awesome. Hey, my mom showed up. Yay. I mean, we're keeping it real here. Mommy, I will call you later. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I didn't get that, Bernice. Did somebody ask something? I'm not sure. I'll, I'll scroll up and see. Let me see here. Uh, maybe you could ask that question again because there's quite a few comments. Yes. Jamie did exposure driving um, and it's getting better each day. Did you do it in this way, Jamie, or did you just kind of put yourself in there? I'm curious. Um, either way will work for people, but this is a bit more structured, but they both work. Thank you, my friend. I have to leave as well, Debbie, in a couple minutes. Jeez, let's just leave together, shall we? All right. But um, this stuff is working. It is venting. Is venting good or bad? Venting, Jamie, is absolutely good because, as we mentioned, anxiety suppression and venting or venting or expression, express, expressing yourself is freedom. But when we vent, we need to consider how we're venting. Right, We consider how we're venting because there's a, a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. Um, and I think we'll understand that as we go forward together. Taking notes, Fleur, that's awesome. Um, notes during anyone who wants me to post them in the group. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah, thanks. That would be huge, totally. I'm also gonna post this on YouTube tomorrow. So you guys can run through it again and there's gonna be new stuff that speaks to you. Tracy says you did good, mom. That's fantastic. At some point we must learn to not bleed on people who did not cut us. Yes, absolutely. So we'll keep it at that guys then. And, um, and I'm just, uh, it's really fun to do these lives. I. I really appreciate you coming and giving up your time and uh, and really trusting in this whole process. And uh, it's I'm just so honored to be a part of um, a community of other teachers and such who are simply there to uh, to help because I and we you know understand how much pain and distress this can cause. And I just want you to know that um, myself and others who are looking to help and such um, have been there and uh, things are going to get better. They are getting better. So make this weekend as flowy as you possibly can make it, meaning allow yourself to get caught up in anything that reminds you of being childlike, like we discussed in the beginning. Allow yourself to get caught up in anything that reminds you of being childlike. And if anything reminds you of being childish, just remember that you can give back those habits to the people that you adopted them from. Mm -hmm.